everybody and may I call this function to order the Honorable Minister for Education, Human Resource, Resource Planning, Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence Mrs. Octavia Alfred, the Secretary to the Cabinet of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Ms. Privo, the Assistant Chief Education Officer, Mr. Gist, Senior Education Officer for Curriculum Measurement and Evaluation Unit, Senior Planning Officer, the Senior Education Officer for Secondary Schools, the Senior Program Officer, Measurement Officer within the Measurement Unit, the CXC Local Registrar, District Education Officers, or Curriculum Officers, or Coordinator for Early Childhood Education, Senior Administrative Officer in the Ministry of Education, Ms. Alport, our UNESCO Local General Secretary, Mrs. Hyacinth, uh, coordinator for Early Childhood Education, guidance counselors in the Ministry of Education, our administrative, technical, and other support staff in the Ministry of Education, uh, principals of primary and secondary schools who are gathered here this morning, all our other invited guests, the media, especially those providing live coverage of, of this event, and those who will transmit the information subsequently, good morning and welcome. We at this moment are here to present the press results of this year's Grade 6 National Assessment for the year 2023. And as we proceed with this morning's function, permit me to call on this is Esther Robinson, who is the principal of the Pioneer Preparatory School, to assist us with the national anthem. Ms. Robinson. And permit me to ask you to stand as we observe this moment. Thank you. Please feel free to join me. Isle of beauty, Isle of splendor, Isle to all so sweet and fair. All must surely gaze in wonder at thy gifts so rich and rare. We do extol healthy lands so like all fountains, giving cheer that warms the soul. Thank you very much, Mrs. Robinson. You may be seated. Well, <laughs> temporarily that is. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I think you should probably stand again. <laughs> and I call on Mr. Maxime, who is the District Education Officer for the Eastern District, to um, lead us in prayer. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. The scripture declares that there is a time and place under the sun for everything. And among all the things that I have listed, we would maybe want to add today a time to take exams and a time to receive the results of the exams that you've taken. So let's bow our heads and pray. Mighty and eternal God, we approach your throne of grace and of mercy, Father. 
We thank you for this day that you've made, O oh God, a day in which we can rejoice and we can be glad. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this moment, O oh God, in which, O oh Father, we can, as a ministry, O oh Father, present to our students, O oh God, who have sat exams, O oh Father, their results, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, at this moment, O oh God, that you would comfort, O oh God, those who may be hurting. You would comfort, O oh God, those who may be disappointed in, disappointed in their performance. But, God, we pray, Lord Jesus, at the end of it all, O oh Father, you would help them to realize, O oh God, that you are the center of everything, O oh God. And with your help, O oh God, everything is possible. We commit, O oh God, the parents and, and, and persons, O oh God, in our, in our presence, O oh God, who may be hurting. We, we've learned, O oh God, of the passing of one young child and we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would comfort, O oh God, the hearts of his parents, O oh Father. We pray, Lord God, for those, O oh God, who would receive their results today, O oh Father. And you would prepare their hearts and minds, O oh God, to receive, O oh Father. And we pray, Lord God, at the end of the day, Lord God, that your name be glorified. We give the glory, honor, and praise, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Maximan. While we are standing still, can we just observe a moment of silence for one of our students at the Benz Primary School who was in grade six. He was due to write the exams and um, he was taken ill and um, he has subsequently succumbed to illness. Um, we ask God to grant to his family, friends, his classmates, teachers, and everybody who he has come into contact with, the strength and the perseverance during this moment of, of grief. So we take a moment of silence in his, in his honor. Thank, Thank you very much. much. You may be seated. Once again, good morning, everybody. I'm not expected to get a response because it's a press event. <laughs> uh, we are indeed delighted to present this year's Grade 6 National Assessment results. Um, firstly, before we do so, permit me to extend a note of appreciation to all our stakeholders who work closely with the Ministry of Education to ensure a successful academic year. The staff of the Ministry of Education must be commended for ensuring continuous supervision and support throughout the school year, but also for ensuring that the examination was efficiently and successfully administered. We recognize the efforts of our school principals and staff for a job well done. We also commend parents and guardians for working closely with the ministry to ensure student success. And while I am on the work of our teachers and the excellent effort that our teachers put into the training of our students, the educational development of our students, I want us to just please reflect and I wish that you stand with me to recognize one of our fallen teachers, Peter Luke, um, who recently succumbed on the weekend. So can we stand to just recognize Yeah, and um, share with his family and friends as well, and ask God to give strength and comfort to everyone who whom we have, may have gotten into contact with, so that they are able to cope with this moment of challenge. And Peter Luke was previously a teacher at the Goodwill Primary School. Many of you may, may have known him. And we express our sympathy to the principal and staff of the school. This was. It's 
Thank you very much. You may be seated. And while I'm on thanking persons, most importantly, I really want to thank our students and their parents as well for remaining focused during the past seven years, really, to ensure that there were successful outcomes in the exams based on the results. Each year, the Ministry of Education conducts a suite of national assessments. And we are here for the grade six national assessment, but I must indicate as well that at key stages within the education development of students, we have other national assessments. So we have the grade two national assessment and the grade four national assessment as well. And these two assessments, which I just referred to, provide significant diagnostic information to the schools in terms of students' performance. And we always lament as a ministry that these are just as important as the grade six national assessment. Because as principals, teachers, the media, support staff, parents who are listening to us, you would well imagine and realize that if your child is performing satisfactorily or in excellent at grade two and four, the likelihood that that child performs excellent in grade six is very, very, very high. And the inverse is also true. Too often, we only place emphasis, and I say we, on the exit exams at the primary school. And sometimes it's too late. So I call on parents to show greater interest in the performance of students at the two critical key stages at grade two and grade four, so that we can make better use of the results. But I also use this medium to call on our educators, our schools more specifically, to ensure that the results of those exams are used for the purposes for which they are intended. And that is to identify areas of challenge within the the, the classroom with the students more specifically and to put structures in place to mitigate those challenges so that at the exit of primary schools at the grade six level, our students will perform much better. You will well agree, as I said earlier, that success doesn't occur overnight. It's a continuous process. And for many of you, you would have heard students giving presentations upon receipt of um, certification or, or recognition at secondary schools and in primary schools. And they will say very often that they started working from early age, from K, and they never relented. And it shows that, and many of them will say, well, my siblings before were successful, and I use that as motivation for me to be successful as well. It shows that it is not, it's not a snapshot endeavor. It is continuous hard work. And we know that if the support structures at the home and at the school, that is the learning environment, are aligned, we will get much better results in terms of students' performance. We have also recognized that literacy Reading and writing, more specifically, are key to successful students' outcomes. And actually, in recognition of that, the Ministry of Education has embarked on a series of training sessions for our teachers to ensure that we re-strategize in terms of how we teach reading and even writing, because that is one of the challenges that we face with student performance, even at the grade two and grade four levels as well. We know that literacy is key, and, and numeracy, literacy and numeracy are key to um, successful outcomes of students. Uh, this year, in keeping with our goals for sustaining the infusion of technology within the classroom, we have sought to continue the rollout of our online administration of the examination. And we had um, two papers online. 
I must say that our students felt very comfortable with writing the exams online, and we know that um, many of us had fears as adults as to whether the students could, could pull it off, but um, we are confident in our students' um, resilience. And uh, it is very important for us as a system because invariably, at some point, even regionally, most if not all exams are going to be online and we need to prepare our students for that. We are at an interesting juncture in the use of technology within the classroom where students feel more, much more comfortable with a device than they do with a book. And there is nothing we can do about it. It is the future of education, and therefore, as a system, we have a responsibility to redirect our students' interest in technology. One where we can harness their productive capacities, their productive capabilities, and to make learning exciting for them. Because, believe it or not, technology within the classroom is here to stay. It's going to be long term. Therefore, the contents that we are to deliver within the classroom, and at home as well, need to be at the level of interest that students enjoy when they serve the internet. Because many of us as educators, as parents, we have a lot of difficulty in getting students out of the computers, out of their iPads or their, their, their cell phones or the tablets, whatever they use, because the information is so addictive for them, whatever they're interfacing with. Sometimes we don't even understand as adults what they're what they what they're contending with. We are comforted as a, as a system that we have a cadre of excellent teachers, supervisors, and support staff. And we are ready and willing to work with our stakeholders. I must say that our stakeholders, predominantly our parents, guardians, and other community persons have been working very well with us, with the Ministry of Education and we thank them for that. The media we also want to thank for the work that they have done in working with the ministry. I, in, the, in welcoming you here this morning, I want to call again on parents to visit our schools more often. Too often, we see parents during PTA engagements and when they are to receive student reports. If you look at a successful child and you look behind the scenes, you will see a parent who communicates with the school, who works closely with the school, and that is the formula for success. So parents, in the future, those of you who have students going to grade 6, 7, next year and, and beyond, please know that working closely with the school is one of the formulas for, for success. So we call on parents to support the Ministry of Education even more closely. Once again, I, I wish to welcome everyone to this event. We know it's an exciting time for our students. Uh, we congratulate the students, all of them, because we always say, your best is good enough. So we want to commend our students for excellent output during this year as we welcome everybody to this event this morning. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, <laughs> I will now call on Ms. Kanye Robinson, who is the Senior Education Officer for Curriculum Measurement and Evaluation, who will present an analysis of this year's results. And um, yes, Ms. Robinson, you may. Good morning, everybody. Let, let us recognize the presence of the Honorable Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, Mrs. Octavia Alfred, Secretary, Secretary to the Cabinet and Acting Permanent Secretary, Ms. Karen Prevo, Assistant Chief Education Officer, 
Senior Planning Officer, Senior Education Officer for Secondary Schools, Senior Program Officer or Measurement Officer, CXC Local Registrar, the District Education Officers, Coordinator for Early Childhood and Curriculum Officers, Learning Support Staff, Guidance Counselors, or the Administrative, Technical and Support Staff of the Ministry of Education, Principals and of Primary and Secondary Schools, the Media, and those of us who are listening. Good morning, everybody. Okay, we are getting close to the moment that you have been um, waiting for. Okay, so let us begin. I'm going to show you an analysis of what we have found for the Grade 6 National Assessment this year. Okay, this year we had 860 students who started the Grade 6 National Assessment. As you can see, the majority of them came from the Western District. We have 101 from the Eastern District, 197 from the Northern District, and 142 from the Southern District. Now, this part is very important. I know most of you say that you, know, you want to hear the results, but it's important that you understand what this slide is saying. Before we present any results, we go through what is known as error checking. So for example, we use what is known as a scatter plot. Okay, now you will see a black circle here. All the dots represent every single candidate. When we click on the dots in the software, it does not give us the name, but it gives us the number, the child's candidate number, which we do not know who the child is. But in clicking, why would I look at these dots? I'm looking at this dot because if you look at the bottom, it says language total. So it means that the child got about 65%. However, if you look at the vertical line, it seems as if the child got 10 out of 60 questions. So if a child gets 60, 65% or 65 out of 100 for language and 10 out of 60 for maths, the next thing that you would have to do is to get one of the administrative assistants to pull out that paper manually correct it to see whether or not it's an error or not. We also have to look at the child's name on it. This time we look at the child's name because sometimes what happens is some students shade the wrong number. They know their name, but sometimes they shade the wrong number. They may write the right candidate number, but they shade wrongly. So then in a situation like that, we go back to check. Okay, so that's one way in which we check the students' grades. Another way is we normally ask the secondary primary schools to send in their order of merit. All schools do a mock exam and they give us their order of merit. So based on their order of merit, again, I can look at the child's mock exam to determine whether or not the child is, is very weak in maths. Okay, and that is something that we use. Okay, and then as we said, for those who did it online, a manual review of the exam will be looked at if it looks as if there's an error in the, in the, mark, in the score. So all this is done before we produce the results. All right. So language one, LA1 means language paper one, LA2, composition, M is maths, SI is science, obviously, and SOC is social studies. And we have a comparison from 2022 to 2023. And if you notice, and this here is done by gender, but if you notice, okay, so for example, in 2022, I'm just using an example here, 39 students got about 39, the average is 39 out of 60 in their multiple choice in 2022. And in 2023, it's 49, same thing. But what you notice is that through all the subjects, there was a slight improvement in the raw scores, except in the LA2, which is the writing. And as Dr. Bless said, 
we observed that decrease in the grade two national assessment which was done in September as well as the grade four national assessment. And we have, as a ministry, put some procedures and practice, well, not practice, but procedures in place to ensure that we address this in the coming school year. Again, this is done by district. And you'll notice that for most of the districts, there has been a slight improvement. I remember last year we spoke of the South, and if you look at the South in 2022 and 2023, you will see that if we look at language for the South in 22, as well as that same area for 23, there has been an improvement. So I must say, I know that the South has done a lot of work in preparing the students, not just for the grade six national assessment, but basically preparing them and ensuring that there's some improvement in the learning that takes place in the schools. Yes, let's give them a hand. Okay, so um, again, the only area that you have a decrease is in writing, all right? But uh, you've got maths. On average, they would get 28 out of 60. This year, they got 33 out of 60. For social studies, 23 out of 50. This year, 25. That's an average of all the students. Um, last year, 26, uh, which the science was, they did very well in the science. Last year, 26 out of 50. On average, this year, 30 out of 50. Okay? Okay. Now, when we talk about scores and the grades that students obtain, you'll notice that we have here what is known as a histogram. You'll notice that the numbers, it's the bottom here, you have total points. 18 to 20 points is a scholarship. And when, for example, 4 to 11 points, that would be considered a, um, you know, a failure, right? So students who get 4 to 11, they, that means that we have gotten Ds and Es. And those from 12 to 15 would have a combination of Bs, Cs, and As. So we say that they have passed, technically passed. And those from 4 to 11, we know that they are special needs that would have to be taken into consideration when they enter the secondary schools. You'll notice that the majority of the students, which is what it's supposed to look like, the majority of the students should be considered average. Okay, so from... 12 to 15 would be considered average, and 16 to 20 would be considered students who um, produce exceptionally good results. But as you look at it, you can see that almost the numbers of persons who we would say that would be um, poor performers, you would supposed to have almost the same um, percentage of persons who are exceptionally good students. Okay? And you can see this in the curve that you see here. Now, as Dr. Blaise was speaking about literacy, I decided, well, we decided to ensure that we kind of focus on it. So, again, we look at it in terms of male and female, or boys and girls. And here we have numbers of students who got A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's in terms of male and female. All right? At the top, we are looking at the language. So, for example, 48 students, 48 girls got A's in language, whereas 26 got A's in, 26 male or boys got A's. So, if you can look at the table and you can see, again, the majority of students, the 177, even for males and for females, would have C's. All right? And the same thing would apply for maths. The majority of students would have C's. So for maths, girls 168, and for males 177. And we'll notice for maths, if we look at um, the A's and B's for maths, the boys are keeping up with the girls, all right? So 54 boy, girls got A's, as well as 51 for boys, 79 for girls, and again, 79 for boys. Even if the C's, is not much, there isn't much of a difference. However, you'll notice as we go to the D's and E's, you have more boys producing D's and E's in both maths and English.
and overall, these are the percentage of students who underperformed, those who produced these and E's or attained these and E's, about 12% of the girls, 23%, 23.8% for boys, 12.69 for girls in paper two, that's the composition, 24.73 for boys. And as we go on, we realize that when we look at underperformance, more boys are underperforming than girls. And this is something that we have been saying year after year after year. And we have been trying with different strategies to ensure that this disparity is decreased. Okay, we are coming almost to the end, but then obviously our honor minister needs to speak. But before she does that, let us just look at what constitutes 18 to 20 points for a scholarship and 16 to 17 points for a bursary. Four A's, because each and A is five points, so four A's is 20 points. Three A's and a B, a B is four points, so that would give us 19 points. Two A's, two B's, or three A's and a C will give us 18 points. So any student with these grades would get a scholarship. For bursaries, you can see an A and three B's, two A's, a B and a C, three A's and a D, an A, two B's and a C, two A's, two C's, four B's, three A's and an E. Now, most times we don't get that. So, for example, if we see three A's and an E, we will, we will query it even before it goes out. We will query it. The possibility, if it is true, it means that the child may have been sick or something happened. But again, we will have gotten that information from the supervisors when they write off their reports to us at the end of the grade six national assessment. But we hardly ever see three A's and an E, okay? Okay, and here we just have a distribution of the scholarships. So we had, in total, 79 scholarships. That is 79 students scored between 18 to 20 points. And the orange shows the girls. The dark, the one in the middle shows the boys. And the, the brown shows everybody. So for example, for 20 points, you had 15 girls and five boys got 20 points. It means that they got all A's. For 19 points, 12 girls and 11 boys. And for 18 points, 21 girls and 15 boys. And I must say, even here we are saying that boys are underachieving, but I must say they, are, they, are, they produced, especially for the scholarships and the bursaries, they did comparatively as well as the girls. And that is shown in the next slide when we look at the bursaries. The boys said, uh-uh. Okay, so 29 boys, 29 girls, 20 boys, 20 girls. So basically, yes, we had 98 bursaries, half for boys and half for girls. So give them a hand, please. And I do not want to take much of your time. So let us just look at the schools that were considered top in the grade six national assessment. It does not mean, it does not mean that their students are in the top five. It just means that generally in the classroom, the students did well, that there were very few D's and E's. Okay, we considered average to be 300 points, so anything above 300 points means that the students produced A's, B's, and C's, all right? So you may have a school here who may not have any scholarships, but the students may have B's, or B's and C's. And I must say that you still need to give them a round of applause because it means that they are working very closely. So you have Pioneer Prep, Lighthouse Christian Academy, Convent Prep, Jubla Primary, Atkinson Primary, Christian Union Primary, Delicis Primary, I'm happy to see that, Ebenezer SDA, 
Savon Pai Primary, Baroness Patricia Scotland, and St. Martin Primary. And you can see that it doesn't matter what the size of the class is, it's as long as effective teaching and learning is taking place in the classroom, okay? Now I will stop here for the moment so that the Honorable Minister can um, address you and then we will produce the rest of the slides after she is done. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Robinson, who is the Senior Education Officer for Curriculum, Measurement and Evaluation Unit, and instructive in a presentation that the, our boys are performing comparable to the girls, so it means that our interventions have been working. So that I know the media always ask about that, so that is good news for us this year. Um, before Honorable Minister makes a presentation, I'm going to call on Mr. Gis, who is um, the Assistant Chief Education Officer, to give us um, some idea of the administrative protocol in terms of um, the exam itself, the logistic, how it is actually administered. So Mr. Gis, come and do this for us, please. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone. And I'm hoping that this is the last time you will hear me presenting anything on the Grade 6 National Assessment. Um, but yeah, I think the unit did an excellent job this year. Um, just to give a little overview of the, uh, the test development process from the actual development, administration, analysis, and presentation of the results. Um, this year, well, every year, the exams, uh, the items, the test items are actually submitted by the actual classroom teachers. Um, we take these questions, we get over, um, over 100 questions, over 140 questions every year. We put these, we select from those, um, put a test together, so we put four different tests together. Uh, these are piloted at the secondary school, so not with the students who are actually doing the exam. This is analyzed, refined, and then we produce a final exam paper. Um, now, once we are ready, the exams are administered at the schools. This year, because we had, because the two officers had vested interest in the exam, like I did on two previous occasions, they were not allowed anywhere near the exam. So Ms. Robinson and Mrs. Actually, two Robinsons. No, Ms. Robin and Ms. Robinson. Yeah, Robinson, Robinson, Robinson. Yeah, so Ms. Robin and Mrs. Rob and Ms. Robinson, because they had vested interest in the exams, they were not allowed anywhere near the exams. Like I said, in my, um, I went through that twice. So the exam was developed by a team. The marking was also done by me and my team. Um, again, they could not be, they were not involved, they could not be involved in the exam. Now, once we have done the marking, the scores have been, um, uh, we, have, we have gotten this course for every student. Up to this point, when we have produced the scores, the raw scores, we don't see students' names. We, do, we have no idea which paper we are marking. We have no idea which, 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 which score. All we see is a candidate number. Once that is done, once I have those scores, it is the raw file, the raw scores. Um, I have it on one system. The senior education officer for curriculum also have that... Um, that data, we both analyze independently. So one person does it, and the other person does it. We never see each other. We never speak to each other during that process. Once we are satisfied that we have the final scores and it is correct, we meet and we match our scores. We make sure that at least the first 250 students are at the same level. So our scores, our, our, our um, standardized scores for the first 250 students at least must be the same. Once that is done and we are satisfied that the list is correct, uh, we, match the, we now match the numbers to the names. So that's the first time we see the who scores whatever. This list, those two lists, only remain with two people. So nobody else sees that list. 
not the chief, not the minister, not the prime minister, not the CAPSEC, not the PS. Nobody sees that list except the two people who did the analysis. This year, it was Ms. Robinson and myself. Um, after this is done, we submit a cabinet paper, a paper to the PS, who will submit a cabinet paper. And on this paper, it says the number of scholarships, based on the, the analysis, the number of scholarships and the number of bursaries that, um, that would be awarded. Um, and then we wait for the minister to tell us we can go ahead and release the results. So up to this point, up to today, I don't think anybody has seen the results except Ms. Robinson and myself. So when the minister presents the results, everybody will get the results. But as of now, um, this is the, the process for the administration and analysis of the Bridge 6 national assessment. Thank you, Mr. Gis, for the synopsis of the administrative protocol. Uh, I will now welcome Honorable Minister, Mrs. Alfred, who will make a presentation and give you pertinent information on the final student outcomes. Ms. Alfred, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I saw the exams this morning, the results a while ago. That's how it is. I suppose if I had a child in the exam, I would not sleep last night. Eh? Um, I want to say to us this morning that we should not be afraid of online exams because we are seeing that the children did better in the science because I guess with all those pictures, you know, the pictures come alive on the computer instead of on the paper, so that is good. I would also like to say that we still need to find ways to increase those A's and those B's and decrease the D's and the E's. Um, having said that, I will also say last year, it was the 8th of July. We were here releasing grade six national assessment results. And here we are again today on July 3rd. On July 3rd, last year it was the 8th, this is the 3rd. And I say how quickly a year can run by. Let me recognize the presence of our, of our chief education, no, who first, of our cabinet secretary, who is also, who is also, I will add, the acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. So for some people that say, I'm got PS, just for your information, this is the acting permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education. Dr. Blaise is the Chief Education Officer acting. Ms. Robinson, Head of the Curriculum Unit. I want to acknowledge all other ministers. Mr. Gis, I will acknowledge Mr. Gis, the Assistant Chief, and all other officers from the Ministry of Education. That's good. All other officers, all of you, because we have to call everybody one by one. Those children will die before they hear that result. I also want to acknowledge the presence of our principals and those who are representing their schools, the media, everybody, good morning. The Ministry of Education extends warmest congratulations to all students who wrote the grade six national assessment as you prepare your transition onto secondary school. Your efforts have been recognized and appreciated by your school, your teachers, and indeed your parents and guardians. I want to thank all principals, teachers, parents, and guardians for your remarkable efforts in ensuring that our students remain focused on their learning. This reinforces the idea that all partners must work together to ensure that every child succeeds. Let us continue to give it our very best. We have indicated repeatedly that parental interest and support are essential elements of student success. The school is just one avenue for learning. We must recognize the home should be an equally ideal learning environment. As you are aware, in the past year, we have affected a number 
we have effected a number of new teacher appointments to the service and we pledge to continue this trend as we reward our teachers with permanent appointments for their hard work and dedication to the profession. I urge our teachers to remain steadfast in your duties as we do our best to create the right opportunities for you. And as you aim to give value for your money, we must see the difference in the performance of our students, not only in the grades, but also in their department and general attitude. Our schools must teach our students healthy self-management skills, especially as it pertains to rest, exercise, and eating well. How to resolve conflict peacefully, how to make informed decision, communicate and negotiate, how to have strong interpersonal relationship skills. We need to teach our children patriotism, nationhood, and what it is to be a good citizen. As we go, in, as we go into the process of education reform, we expect changes to be made to the grade six national assessment. We cannot continue to put our children under that level of stress at the end of their primary school. I know from experience that if we start to pay attention, special attention to our children from pre-K, and if we continue to be involved in their school life, they excel naturally. I have three children. All three children got scholarship at Cassie Bruce Primary School. They still went to garden, they still bathed in the river, they still had sports. And I, because sometimes I shiver when I listen to the testimonials of students who excel. So much pressure and stress. You hear little people talking about sleepless nights. Moje. And all you can get is, the highest you can get is four A's, is a scholarship. Sleepless nights, lessons before school, lessons after school, lessons on Saturday. Um, it concerns me that, we, that we, we need to be reviewing what we are doing so children can take this assessment with, with less pressure. We have witnessed over the years that parental interest is at its peak two periods during students' primary school life, namely upon entry to primary school. All parents by school, fixing chairs, wiping table, they want to know the teacher, they want curriculum, some of them, they don't even say the curriculum, they, they think they're teaching them their teacher. What are you going to teach them for this term? Give it to me, show it to They're excited. And the next time you see them, is in grade six. So we strongly believe that if the level of parental interest at these periods, that you had the same interest all through the child's school life, we are confident that we would witness a significant improvement in students' performance. Our experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic taught us that we should always ensure that technology continue to play a central role in student learning and assessment. I want to reassure the public that the Ministry of Education has taken steps to guarantee that technology remains in the heart of classrooms' instructions. We do, it was COVID, we don't know what next. According to what happened next, we do not want to go back to pre-COVID time. Therefore, we encourage our schools to continue to utilize the Google Classroom platform to engage students in classwork and to complete assignments at home. We are especially proud of our students and our schools which have improved in performance over the years because it's wonderful to recognize improvement just as it is to recognize excellence. As ministry, we continue to pledge our support for schools in order to improve performance standard. This year's results have again proven that reading is fundamental to student success at any exam. Truth is, this is another thing that frightens me. I'm almost at the point of saying nobody reads. And as for newspaper self, once upon a time people used to walk around with novels 
And people used to harass people. When you're going to finish with the book so I can get it. And people used to exchange books. And now people read course material. You do a study in a program at UWE. Not true? You do not UWE, so you read a piece of thing on some psychologists for your assignment. But very, I, people do not read for pleasure as they did before. So this is not just a concern at school level. It could be something that's not part of the household and it is strictly known to our children. So let us get back into the habit of reading. Because our data shows that students who are competent in reading after the three years of primary school, they do much better at all assessments. This is important because I know from experience that if a child gets to eight years, and they have not mastered some reading skills, we need a special program for that child. So let us start to ensure that we too, as adults, let children see us reading so that they can think it's in their mind is something, oh, oh, that's a good thing, I need to learn to read. You know, or tell them a story from a book so that they want to pick it up and do it themselves. Let us get back to our reading habits. This year, we saw areas for improvement in students' writing and consequently, the Ministry of Education intends to work closely with teachers to continue to implement strategies to improve students' writing skills. We are well aware that improvements in students' performance is hinged on improving teachers' competency. Subsequently, the supervision and support staff of the ministry will continue to support classroom teachers in improving the quality of delivery. Additionally, we will continue to support our teachers' pursuit in continuous professional development locally, regionally, and internationally. It is my turn, I think. Can I turn into the results? You but no. <laughs> I extend special thanks to the staff of the Ministry of Education for a job well done. Thanks to the Senior Education Officer for Curriculum, Measurement, and Evaluation, Ms. Candia Robinson for her tireless efforts at ensuring that the examinations were successfully administered. I also extend gratitude to Mr. Gies for technical inputs in preparation of the exams, and to the leadership of the Ministry of Education, Dr. Blaise and the rest, we value your efforts at ensuring efficiency in management in the education system. Thanks also to our teachers and principals who played their role in making the administration of the exams a success as usual. The Ministry of Education will continue providing students who excel with scholarship and bursaries, as well as assistance for students under the textbook scheme, transportation scheme, school transfer grants, uniform allowance, and other forms of assistance from the Education Trust Fund. On this note, I now turn to the results. Yes. I want to go through all the how many students wrote an A's and B's because you want me to do that now? <laughs> I will present the top performers at the 2023 grade 6 national assessment. The top performers in the 2023 examinations are Larissa L. Hernandez Fadul from the St. Martin's Primary School. Four A's. All of the names that you will hear, they receive straight A's. Brittany Lewis, Convent Prep, four A's. Jazara Lewis, St. Martin's Primary, four A's. Neil McPherson, Pioneer Primary, four A's. And Hannah A. Bully, Ebenezer Seventh Day School, four A's. The Ministry of Education remains committed to this mandate to provide all citizens with quality education in keeping with our vision, every learner succeeds. On this note, I wish to again congratulate our top performing students and schools this year, and I wish you a good rest. <laughs> this summer, make sure every week you take a little me time. Make your happy corner, choose your co favorite colors, and take a little me time because September is waiting for us to start running again as we seek to do better as a ministry. God bless you. Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Good morning.
But we are not through now. Now we are going to call all the names of the scholarships, eh? I'll do some, and, 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 and my peers will help me to do some. Um, not in order of schools, eh? not in order of grades. Okay? In order of schools. From Cassibrus Primary, we have Jonella Carbon. Christian Union Primary, Joel Etienne, Chu Francis, Ren Sebastian. Convent Prep, Jolie Atido, Ari Bopier, Ty George, Sajid Joseph, Brittany Lewis, Jalen Lloyd, Kofi Matthew, and Sony Prosper, Jelani Severe, Mia Severe, Kayla Schillingford, Adiles Thomas, and Janice Thomas. Cooley Bistry Primary, Prayer Paul. Daly's Primary, Shania Simon. Jubla Primary, Kelani Stowe. Ebenezer, Ebenezer SDA. Hanaya, Hananaya Bully, Daniel Libla, Zeni Richards, Rachel Sipa, and Nikita St. John. Girodel Primary, Dilani Elwin. Goodwill Primary, Joel John. Okay, I put that one in the back. Joel John, Goodwill Primary. Lighthouse Academy, Faith John Finn, and Locanson Joseph. Massa Kenfield Primary, Junior Lee and Aiden Roye. Pitted Savant Primary, Namahilia Stout. And if I said wrongly, please, I beg your forgiveness. Pioneer Prep, Emma Amo, Kelani Dorival, Giona Leta, Neil McPherson, Ch Chayara Philip, and Jolly Victorin. And Eli Wichurch Ed. Doug, Roosevelt Douglas Primary. Emma, Emma Cole, Sedia Laville, Adele Leta, Aliana Nantan. Yes, Aliana Nantan. So that was my last one. I, I reach on R, and then PS will take from S to go. I thank you. Uh -uh. Thank you, Minister. Uh, okay, so Salisbury Primary, Haley Bedno, Amia Vidal, <laughs> Sally Bear, Kellan Sanford, Sufria Primary, Sajani Alexander, and from St. John's Primary, we have Edric Augustine, Denzel Bell, Verlon Roy, Verlon Boye, Essa Daniel, Kamaya Gordon, Yariel Peter, Shania Philip, St. John's Primary. St. Luke's Primary, Richard Grubb, Grubby, Akio Grell, Jarius Hippolyte, Dajani Mayers, and Taya Pelty, St. Luke's Primary. St. <laughs> Martin Primary, Linnea Atido, Brianna Briggs, Cassidy Dover, Serena Dow, Kelissa Gregoire, Abby Hamlet, Larissa Hernandez Fadu, Desiree Joseph, Brielle Lafluf, 
Jazara Luis, Jardine Robinson, Alisa Theophil, Brianna Xavier, Nathaniel Fraser, and Kaelan Matthew. Sorry, that's Brianna Xavier is the last from St. Martin Primary. St. Mary's Primary, Nathaniel Fraser and Kaelan Matthew. You got that? Tetmon Primary, Jade Frank and Kenan Loda. Western District SDA Primary, Shania Dinad. And finally, W.S. Stevens Primary, Elise Charles. Uh, thank you to the Honorable Minister, Mrs. Alfred, and our Acting Permanent Secretary and Cabinet Secretary to the Cabinet, Ms. Privo, for your presentations. Uh, we have well, two other items. <laughs> One is the question and answer segment, which will give the media a few minutes to um, um, pose any questions that there may be. And at some point subsequent to the program, we would like um, the... Yes, okay, so let's do the question and answer segment. Uh, we open the floor now to any questions that you may have with respect to the Ministry of Education's administration of the exam or any general questions that you may have. The floor is open. Yes. Over the years, we have, we, well, we, well, it was more acute than the previous years. This year, as we indicated just um, a moment ago, we are, we are seeing some progress in that regard. But it's a very complicated phenomenon. Uh, the, the performance of, um, the gender-related performance and gender gaps in performance is not restricted only to, to Dominica. It is a phenomenon in, 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 uh, pretty much in, the, in, in this part of the world where um, girls do outperform um, boys um, in certain examinations. Although it is pretty much restricted to general performance, because when you look at the top performers, even at CSEC level, the boys are, are really, really doing well at the, at the um, top tier. Um, so it really is just related to general performance. And there are a number of factors which may uh, influence um, gender-related performance. Uh, and to do you, uh, uh, some time ago, last couple of years, the Ministry of Education sanctioned a, a, a task force which would look a little deeper into the phenomenon because um, you need to speak to, first of all, different stakeholders to get a better appreciation of the challenge. So the students will have their own perspectives. What are the likes of boys as, as opposed to the likes of girls? When you look in the classroom, who are the persons who are teachers? And how does that filter in, in terms of a conscious effort by the, the teaching staff to differentiate appropriately? Because simple example. You are teaching in a classroom and you have a co-ed classroom, boys and girls together. And the examples that you use to work through a problem can have an impact on students' appreciation of the task and their response to the task. So if you perpetually use examples that favor girls, um, implicitly, and it's not deliberate, it may just happen as a natural thing, then you may find that the boys may not 
get as much involved in terms of the task. And sometimes we talk about equity and so on, and that is more you know, an intellectual discussion. But certainly that has a factor. So again, when we recruit staff, we, we try our best to have a, a good balance. Um, but it's not always possible, so you would realize that most of our teaching staff are, are women. Um, we try our best to reach out to the males. Um, but again, it's cyclical because um, if the challenge persists and our boys are not, um, you know, at the, the, the terminal and at CSEC and so on, and, and even in university, if you look at the persons who go to study, generally speaking, then you find that you have a reduced um, pool of persons to choose from in terms of, of human resource. So that is in, indeed a challenge. In terms of the text that the students use, recently we had to sanction some of the publishers uh, in terms of what is in the text. Because implicitly you might find a textbook have a, a certain level of bias. That, that you might see. So for instance, a, a common one we used over the years where you had the, um, the, the, one of the, the textbooks, Keskidit was, was looking at a science um, project and was looking at the girls and the boys planting a, a tomato or whatever, a cucumber, whatever plant. And they're saying that the, the text had, the, girls, the girl is taking care of her plant and it is thriving and so on, and the boy, and that is key at, at, at kindergarten level, and the boy is not um, attending to his plant and the plant will not die. Um, how do you, when a child comes in into school and that's the first experience that the girl is more disciplined than the boy, then, and the text is perpetuating that, then you can see what's going to happen downstream. So, so even in, in terms of the home, how do we, the, the boys, the parents may tell the girls, well, go to your book, go and study something, and the boys may have to run the errand. And those, there are a number of factors that, that um, perpetuate the, the gender um, considerations. And we are well aware of that. We are conducting a study now which will include um, the perspectives of various stakeholders to see how we can you know, have a better appreciation for the challenge. But it's not something that you can just put structures in place for you have to understand the phenomenon before you, you do a lot. We have fortunately been retraining our staff, um, particularly with reference to the delivery in the classroom, the sensitivity and differentiation. And I think that has paid off in terms of what you're seeing there over the last couple of years. You would have seen it's not an overnight um, you will not make overnight gains. It is gradual process of improvement, and we have seen the improvement. So we are hoping that we're going to continue building on that improvement. So in the next two, three years, we will have, you know, uh, pretty much at every level, the boys competing, you know, um, equitably with the girls. Thank you for the question. Anyway, yeah. any other questions? Yeah. Uh, right. So, so um, I think that. Seeing that we don't have many questions, it seems the public, the media, as a representative of the public, <laughs> is satisfied with the performance of the ministry. Um, the principals, please know that your results are available, and so you'll collect them on your way to your, at the end of the function. Um, I want to really thank everybody participating in person here, as well as those who have been listening to us um, enthusiastically, I must add, um, on, the very, on the various... Um, media outlets, whether it's live stream or, or live from the radio stations. Um, I want to again call on parents to be gentle with your, with your, with your children. Um, as we often say, if they give it their best shot, that's good enough. Yes, if they come with a pass, because one of the things I must say while we are ending, is, is a scholarship doesn't necessarily give you any future indication as to the performance of a child in secondary school. Um, and so, so bear in mind, we have seen that students get passes and they end up at the top of their class at every level. So parents, be mindful of that. Be gentle on your children. Tell them you have tried your best. That's good enough. Now let us go to the secondary school and give it your best shot. And that will encourage the students instead of being hard on them. We congratulate all our students no matter their performance. The work to be done is at the secondary school now. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Yes, and Honorable Minister has one more thing. Yes, Honorable Minister. Thanks. I think many parents are listening. I want to advise parents that if their children are still young and the results are like four E's in a row, I think the best thing is for us to send the children back to the primary school with a remedial program with a special program that the ministry will help to put together for them instead of moving them forward at 11 years with four years. So that's just an advice because sometimes we are busy to move them into... So we, but 
The first option is always to the parents, but the advice is better they repeat grade six and beef up their performance than moving on with four E's. Thank you. And, and thank you very much for bringing that up, Honorable Minister. While we're on that, I also want to inform that we need to give our children a chance to go through the educative process from K to fifth form at the secondary school, at least the primary and secondary process. The idea of trying to get students in too early or having them jump levels have an impact on their overall performance. Because you would realize that a child may perform on a test, but there are critical developmental aspects that the child has to go through in terms of the foundations of the particular subject. So a child who misses K or misses one or misses preschool may miss those developmental and foundational areas even if they are performing and downstream it will catch up with them because they would have missed some of the structures they need to support them in later years. So parents don't only look at the performance of a child on a test because the schooling system is just as important for the child. I need to just remind our parents of that. Um, and continue working with the Ministry of Education. As I always say, trust the process. The persons who are charged with the responsibility are charged for a particular reason because they may have a better technical appreciation. They may have various lenses from which they can see things. And um, just trust the process and work with us, and um, I think we will do well as a system. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Um, over and out, please, let us just allow the live stream to get off before we yes, proceed. Thank you very much.